Inflection is at the sharp end of the quantum technology business. Based in the United States, the UK and Australia, Inflection is dedicated to commercializing quantum technologies, artificial intelligence and machine learning to revolutionize industries, improve decision making and strengthen global cooperation. I sat down with CEO Scott Farris here in Davos to talk about Inflection and its vision. Scott, great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for taking the time. Look, first of all, why don't we get the easy stuff done first? What is quantum? What does inflection do? And what's your direction of travel? Well, it's, it's funny starting with the easy stuff, talking about quantum. Uh, quantum is an intimidating word. Um, it's, it's actually just a new capability. It, it's, a, it's a layer of physics that's always existed. It's the physics of small. And what's really fascinating about the physics of small is things behave differently at the atomic level. And, and really what quantum is, is unlocking that level of microatomics and the ability to, to use that to do useful things in a wide range of applications from healthcare to enterprise to defense and security. Can you give us an example of some of those applications or one of those applications? Oh, absolutely. So anyone has had an MRI, that's quantum. Uh, so we're looking at uh, how, how uh, atoms behave um, and we're using that to image parts of your body, but, but that's very much quantum. Um, quantum computing, which there's a lot of conversation about, is really the far extreme. It's the most sophisticated and most challenging aspect of quantum. But again, this is really unlocking uh, how things behave at the atomic level and then using that for practical daily applications. So within that whole research, development, scientific discovery, application and selling it on and upscaling, where does inflection sit? So inflection really sits at the, the kind of the ground, uh, ground zero for thinking about how we move it from science and research into real commercial products. So uh, quantum science is itself is an old field, uh, 40, 50 years of, of study. Uh, the sciences are well understood. The, the last 15, 20 years have been really trying to determine how we could build things uh, using quantum sciences. And we're now at an inflection point in the uh, name of the company uh, where we're starting to realize that we can bring these into practical, useful devices that, again, can do productive things. So what sort of impacts can we look for as members of the general public as to how this science is coming into play? So, again, there's, there's a wide range of impacts. Uh, we'll see impacts in the health and life sciences industry. I, I mentioned a few minutes ago, MRIs are a great example of early applications of quantum sciences. Uh, there are new generations of very high resolution imaging technologies uh, that are uh, coming into the market over the next couple of years as a result of, again, unlocking atoms. Um, there are new applications in terming, determining, for example, um, how the, ele the electrical signals in your body behave. Uh, again, if you look at either at your brain or your heart, uh, they're run by very uh, minute electrical signals. And again, quantum sciences and quantum systems will allow us to understand those signals, uh, how they're behaving, how information is transferred. That has a lot to do, for example, of prediction around health events, uh, whether it be a mental health event or whether it be a cardiovascular health event. So that's just one really straightforward example where you'll see, again, quantum sciences begin to provide real near-term applications to improving people's lives. So as you continue your work and you start to make more inroads into things that you're interested in and you're researching, is the private sector and our policymakers ready and waiting to take that new technology on board? Yeah, I would think probably no. I think, again, a lot of the conversation around quantum sciences has been around quantum computing. Uh, and again, while quantum computing is, again, something that's going to benefit uh, a large part of human society and the things that we can unlock with quantum computing, it's also the most challenging. Uh, as I said earlier, qu uh, quantum is really unlocking how things behave at the atomic level. Uh, there are some really cool things that happen at the atomic level, and, and quantum computing tries to unlock all of those at the same time. And so because of that, it's quite challenging. Uh, but it's also, I think, will be the most impactful over the long term. Quantum computing will allow us to create new material systems, uh, understand how weather patterns behave, understand, for example, how photosynthesis works uh, at a large level, it does practical things. It helps us in terms of thinking about logistics, uh, you know, large scale manufacturing infrastructure and the logistical challenges that classical computing may not be able to unlock. Quantum computing can start to unlock provide better answers for more efficiency and more productive businesses. I'm sure it happens all the time, but if you could get the policymakers and the investors into a room, what would your appeal be to them in terms of where they should direct their attention or energies? 
Yeah, so I think there's a there's a lot of much like AI, there, there's a lot of attention on policy around quantum in terms of how it can be used for good, how it can be used for bad. Uh, I think you're really helping having policymakers understand where it is in its evolution uh, and be able to construct policies that allow for companies to to work together or uh, countries to work together. I think again, quantum is a it's a large activity. Uh, it's very complex. Uh, it, it's going to create new standards. Uh, when you start talking about standards, by default, you start talking about cooperation. And so this will require governments to cooperate. Uh, this will require private companies to, to cooperate, to understand what those standards should be, what they could be, uh, and do it in a fair and equitable way. And I guess all that brings in a, the suggestion of an impact on the global workforce about how Absolutely. people conduct their jobs, what sort of effects or training should we be looking at for that? Yeah, so again, if you're working in quantum sciences, uh, you have to be a physicist. Um, and uh, there's not a lot of people that, that uh, throw their hand up and, and want to be a physicist. We, we need more physicists. But, but the reality is, again, quantum is just a tool. It's like a tool, uh, like a, a semiconductor is used for a microprocessor. It's a tool that allows you to do things better, to more precisely, faster, uh, at higher scale. And so it's really, I think, for people thinking about the workforce and, and how to unlock quantum, it's, it really the challenge is, is how do you start thinking exponentially? Because uh, that's really what quantum allows us to do. It allows us to, to things are 100, better, 100 times better, 1,000 times better, 10,000 times better. And as humans, we're not used to that. Uh, we're used to things getting slightly better. And again, for the current technology world, we've lived in Moore's Law for the last 40 or 50 years, where things generally get about twice as good every two years. That's been a predictable roadmap. And what quantum allows us to do is it, it's about, again, things get 100 times better or 1,000 times better. Uh, each time they get better. And, and so it's, it's tough. It's really tough to, to get your head around that. Yeah, because even with Moore's law, we've had huge cultural jolts into kind of the demographics yeah. of populations yeah. and generations and you know, the whole the whole joke about how grandpa doesn't know how to work the iPad or oh, the remote control yeah. for the TV. <laughs> if you're talking about accelerating that process, there's a huge cultural rearrangement coming our way. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think one of the things that anybody thinking about uh, themselves and preparing themselves for the workforce is that the, the rate of change is accelerating. Um, it's accelerating because of AI. We're starting to see how fast things move because of you know, what unlocked large data sets. Uh, quantum is the same thing. Quantum creates significantly, vastly larger data sets. In so many ways, quantum and AI, AI work hand in hand. Uh, again, the things that we're working on inflection with, ins with sensors uh, is really creating a class of sensors that create the most accurate data possible. Uh, we're creating sensors, for example, that, that operate at what's called the quantum limit. In, in other words, they can't be any more efficient than operating at the quantum limit. And so we're creating RF networks, for example, that have a, the ability to unlock uh, the spectrum that we use for our wireless devices, for communications, uh, to be able to operate those, those networks at the absolute quantum limit. So for someone watching this interview, or for me myself, how should I envision this as a, a new kind of software? As, should I see it through the prism of a kind of an IT relationship, or is it something divorced from that? So this, this is technology that runs in the background. Uh, it's hardware. Um, I think one of the challenges with quantum uh, is it does require a new class of hardware. And that class of hardware is not something that's been built before. Uh, in many ways, it's building on the foundation of the semiconductor and micro microelectronics industry. Um, but as a new class of hardware that will just run in the background, much like all hardware runs in the background. Uh, so most people won't see it. Uh, what they'll see is the benefit from it. They'll see more accurate information. Again, one of the areas that we're working in is the area of precision time. Um, you know, most people think time is a boring thing, but again, the world runs on time. Everything runs on time. As things run faster, you need to tell time more accurately. You need to be able to distribute it faster. And, and those are things that we can do with, with quantum systems. You talked about companies having partnerships. You talked about countries and governments having partnerships because of the quantum revolution, if you like. So final thought then, Scott, you know, what's your vision of a, of a global quantum ecosystem? Yeah, I think, again, I'll go back to time. I think the, the area that we're really starting to unlock inflection is a next generation of timekeeping technology that is significantly more accurate. It's, it's more reliable. Uh, it's more resilient. Uh, again, in, in today's broader geopolitical events, all time is distributed by satellites. Um, as we've seen, time can be corrupted through you know, jamming of satellite signals and things of that nature. And so as we think about creating a new era of precision timekeeping, that's one area where we need uh, strong alignment. Uh, we can't have countries keeping time on different time precision uh, kind of uh, standards. And so this is an area that we're really starting to pioneer as we think about 
uh, moving advanced quantum timekeeping devices into the marketplace, uh, how do we get governments aligned around that? How do we get corporations and, and enterprise companies aligned around a new standard of time? Scott, pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much indeed. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.